guys uh join me for this video here this is episode three of the leathercraft business builders and we're going to be talking about pricing pricing is a big thing when it comes to leathercraft that's one of the one of the number one questions i get is how do you price your leather work and we're going to start and in dive into that tonight uh, this is part one of pricing because i think that it's it's a question that is going to require a little bit more time um, to really unfold for everybody because this isn't going to be just a simple formula if you're looking for a simple formula that hey figure my hours at this much and after if i've been doing leather work for one year i should be able to charge this much per hour and this many projects it doesn't quite work like that um, at least i don't know of a good system that is really foolproof for everybody because it's it's an individual thing what we're doing running these business so we're going to dive in here again uh be sure have your questions ready we're going to do a live q a uh, here towards the end and this is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode and we're going to we're going to expand on this in the future but bring your questions uh i'm going to be doing a giveaway with uh, another t-shirt here so this is one of the shirts from s and d design co there's a link in the description to check out all their other cool designs as well my wife's got some amazing stuff going on there uh, a few other links in the description there weaver leather um, appreciate all they do they give they're given a 10 percent discount to all of you guys that follow me so use promo code joe 10 but if you click on that link it should give it to you automatically so anything that you need from them from leather tools machines all of that the discount's good on on all of it so um we'll get to the other links in a minute but i am going to dive right in here if you are just starting out in leather work and trying to figure out how to price things it can be tough and i'm not going to give you an exact answer but i'm going to give you a few things to to think about here when you're talking about pricing there's a lot of factors that go into it how long uh how long does does it take you to do the project what are your materials cost? And those are the two factors that a lot of people think of is just my time and my materials. That's great, except for we're not just talking about like plain construction work or something, right? It's, it comes down to this is artwork, really. So you're selling more than just utility gear. Right now, maybe you are just doing a utility your thing and, and you can have a little more straightforward pricing, but the market is going to tell you a little bit on what you can charge. And I, I say that the market's going to tell you because you can, uh, you can, you can move your prices to fit your workload. Uh, if, if you're, if you're not charging enough, you're getting swamped with orders. You start up in your price, that's going to balance out your market and start uh, dialing in there. What, what we don't want to be doing is, is being shady about stuff, right? And what I mean by that is I don't want to, I don't want to just be undercut and trying to do something as cheap as I can, because that's not good for you. It's not good for the industry. Uh, and in the long term, it's not good for your customer either. So a lot of your pricing is going to kind of come back to what we talked about back in episode one about your why. Why are you doing? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you building this business? What is your goal with it? Are you just trying to make as much as you can as quick as you can? Um, do you have a passion for the industry? A passion for your specific clients? And we're gonna be asking those questions as you're figuring out your pricing. If you're just starting out here's what i recommend i recommend you take your material cost and double that don't even charge for your time that's simple when you're getting started you know what i find is people get dive into to leather work and they think well what's everybody charging you know what's what's he charging what's she charging you know i, I better charge the same thing and there's, there's a little bit of nobility and not wanting to undercut somebody. However, you have to be honest with yourself. What, 
what's the quality of your work? How much time have you put in to mastering what it is that you're building? You know, just because somebody charges, you know, thousand dollars for a pair of shafts doesn't mean that you starting out are going to be able to charge that much right um and that's i mean that's just an example but you have to take into consideration where your skill level is and that's what's kind of tough because if you start out just trying to charge for your materials and your time it doesn't work because when you're starting out a job is gonna take you way longer than it should, right? Or than it will eventually. So if you think about a belt, right? I, I have work that I did when I was first starting and earlier on, there might be a belt that it might have taken me four days to build this thing. And the quality of it, because I was just starting out, wasn't very good anyways i can spend four days and still come up with a hunk of crap you know like at the time i was proud of it but in in retrospect looking back like it just wasn't there like the the quality was not there because i hadn't put in the time yet i didn't i didn't invest in myself yet to get the quality up there so to think that that i was going to charge what I charge now it just doesn't work that way um, you know if you say well it's my materials are 30 bucks in this project and it took me four days well if you go charging out all that time somebody is highly overpaying for their product probably um, because that same project once you learn what you're doing and get more efficient is probably only going to take you you know maybe half a day uh, and jerry says better tools help with the better quality and that's for darn sure and and it brings up a great point as you get further along in your career you're gonna be investing back into more tools and those better quality tools which is going to increase your quality increase your efficiency so it makes less time and you'll start gradually making more per hour essentially for the time you put into your products, but you're not gonna get that time paid for right off the bat. But it, that's the same in just about any industry you go into, there's a learning curve in that. You know, the, if you wanna go be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, any of that, you're gonna spend time and money going to school and learning that trade. Now you're not getting paid for that time. You're even paying somebody else for that time. So it's pretty unique in the fact that we can get really paid to learn in leather work, right? And it's a great opportunity, but you can't expect to charge over a map, you know, too big of an amount for that learning curve, right? So that's why I say, if you're just starting, start with, with who, who, you know, your friends and family, and say hey i'm i'm learning i'm working on this what can i build you i'd love to build you something it's just my you know my materials cost essentially my tools and materials which you figure on double your materials and why double your materials there's not an exact science but uh sometimes you might have to do it twice <laughs> to get a decent project out right and you're getting you're getting paid for that learning time uh the time you're putting in on that on those products every product you build you're going to learn something and get better so then the next one you're a little bit faster more efficient better quality and you're starting to put out a product that's going to be worth charging a little bit more for down the road so to jump in and just try to charge as much as you can off the bat isn't going to work super well not for longevity of your business you know, you might get clients that, that oh, okay, yeah, I'll pay for that. I bought one from this other guy last year, and it cost that much. So, of course, yours is going to cost that much. They don't know that you're just starting out. And then you get a bad rap when the quality of product doesn't match the price that you charge for it um, or your, your timeline, things like that. So we have to take that all into consideration. 
But as you get going, and what we'll talk about in further episodes is then we start trying to match the market um, and com we can compare your quality and start looking at back to that why. What do you want to get out of your business? You know, are you in it to make as much money in a short amount of time as you can? Well, you can start bouncing out and looking at products that are, um, that are a high profit margin on those products, but also we can start looking at different markets where you're marketing your products too, but that's going to, the, the goal with what you're wanting to do with your business is going to help set what price point you're looking to try to get. And the market's going to help you. I mean, the market's not going to lie. If, if you are doing a good job at marketing your business and you have a good clientele, you might be able to charge more than somebody else does for the same product. But you're maybe you're better at marketing and you have a better strategic plan for what, um, what clientele you're targeting. Or possibly you're just better at the business end of it and you are on time you you over deliver with with what you promise your customers and then the quality might be the same as this other guy but the customer service then the full package that goes on with your product is more than what they have so that's that's another thing that to think about down the road too and these are all just kind of thoughts to that are going to build into our whole whole thing that we round out on pricing. Uh, this episode is really just kind of get you thinking on that different stuff and and to gather more questions from you guys too to see where uh, where you're at and what your biggest concerns are with it. But I, I find a lot of people just starting have no idea where to start with pricing and I would recommend just that, just cost your materials and do and working for free essentially and to and enjoy the learning curve of it and be willing to put in the time and the if you're not willing to put in the time at first and and not get paid on it if you're expecting to make that money right off the bat and man i'm not i'm not working for anything less than x amount of dollars well your business is probably not going to have the longevity um, or the depth to it that that we're really looking for when we're talking on these episodes and when we're talking about um, building your business up. So we want to we're not just wanting to skyrocket your business, make as much as we can as quick as we can. And that's why we really talked about that why on the first episode because what the strategies I'm going to be talking about is going to be talking about building a good strong foundation in your business that can last. Now you might pivot and, and do some different things with your business as you go, but that main foundation is going to last. So being willing to put in that time for less money at first is going to really help. But I thought I saw a couple questions pop in here. We're going to kind of get, uh, get right rolling with these, uh, with the question, uh, question and answer period here. So I want to hear, hear your guys' thoughts and, and what, uh, what your biggest concerns are. Uh, ready to start shooting. What would you charge for fixing someone else's mistakes? Um, that's a that's a really loaded question. I'd have to hear a little bit more of the details on that one. Um, you know, if somebody, you know, if a client. It, it depends if, if somebody walked into my shop um, and oh, I have something that fell apart on me. I had gotten it from somewhere else, um, but but I really want to get this fixed. That's one thing. If they had maybe talked to me and then tried, decided not to order and went somewhere else because they uh, they get it cheaper somewhere else with somebody that was less experienced and they got a shoddy product because they were trying to go cheap then they're going to probably get charged for the repair pretty pretty well but if it's maybe a normal customer or something then 
that's a different that's a different story uh jeff you signed up for the class and are learning a lot that's awesome i am so happy you're in there uh which brings up a great point there's a link to that class uh, he's talking about the leather life classroom and we do a new project every month any walk through step by step in depth videos any tooling construction pattern layout all that stuff um, is all in those and it's a subscription based class which uh, right now if you get in in the month of january you get in at a discount and you will stay at that discount on your subscription so uh, don't miss out on that if you do want to get in on some uh, on some detailed instruction uh, where you get all the patterns downloaded as well it's difficult to work out cost for okay terry this is a great point here uh it's difficult to work out cost where a tote bag has a lot uh, a lot of material cost compared with a tooled belt which has less material cost but high labor yeah, your the material is the the material cost in a project is gonna really kind of vary between your project, but the and that, and that's where with the goals of your business you can decide what um, what type of profitability margin are you trying to get with your products, and and there's some projects that have higher profit profit line um, when you take into consideration just the materials um, you know the time the time invested in a project that that is a factor as well um, and but some of what you're charging for too is as you get as you get going is not just the the time invested in the in the project itself but the time it's taken you to learn your craft and and hone your skills um, so all the time that you're putting in when you start and you're working for peanuts like for nothing really that's that learning curve that you later on get paid for down the road and and that's where that's where you start seeing the difference between somebody that's running a business and somebody that is just kind of doing a little side hustle and making a little money on their craft pro projects. Um, and, and that's what we're talking about, getting in depth with the business side of it as we go. When you go to the doctor and or you get an attorney for something, you are not paying them for their materials and the time they spend with you that day. You know, you might go to the doctor and you walk in the somebody that you break your arm, they have to put it in a cast. I mean, your materials of casting that up, granted, we don't see a whole lot of hard casts these days, but you got the idea. The materials in that are peanuts. The time it takes them, really not all that much. The bill you get is quite a bit. And one of the greatest things I ever heard about pricing is this story about this big big factory and it's a big manufacturing plant and they have they have like a thousand people working in there and stuff is going on they are turning out product like that well special really specialized business there and the factory the whole factory goes down this control panel breaks and everything stops it's out of halt so these owners are losing money left and right right now they call the maintenance guy up and he comes in there, opens up the control panel, turns one little knob, boom, everything fires up. So, all right, awesome. How much do we owe, owe you? $10,000. $10,000? That's ridiculous. You just reach in there and you turn one knob. I, I want to see an itemized bill on that. I says, okay. Writes out the itemized bill, slides it over to him. I reads it, writes him a check, happy as can be. Never asked another question. The itemized bill says, turning knob, $1. 
knowing what knob to turn, 9,999. And that's, that's where the difference in pricing is. It's not just your materials and the time you spend on that project. If you're gonna run a business, you have to take in a lot of different factors in there. So that's where we talk about time and, and it's hard just to have a, a real dead set. Now you can have an idea with your goals of how much, how much money do I wanna profit per project or per day in my shop or what are my financial goals I'm wanting to meet with my shop and then work backwards to what does my shop need to be doing, uh, how much products can I produce and what do those need to sell for um, and then that decides you kind of balance out between is it stuff you like to build or stuff that is a higher profit margin that you don't necessarily like to build but it helps you meet the needs that um, of your economic goals in your business so that makes you like to do them so there they can go a few different ways on that um, Material cost. Just focused on learning as much as I could. Kenneth, yes, uh, yeah. Focus on learning. That's the biggest thing. As you get going, um, you'll you'll start picking up your materials cost and just take a note of it. Um, you know, and your materials cost is can change. Your materials cost is going to go down a little bit as you probably progress because you're going to be doing more work and being willing to get. Um, you know, invest in some larger sides of leather versus maybe some project pieces. You know, like Weaver Leather, there's a link for them in the description there. And they they sell just smaller project pieces, like one foot by two foot pieces. And the cost per square foot on that piece is a lot more than if you buy a big, huge side. But a lot of times if you're just starting out, you might not want to invest, you know, $200 on a big side of leather when you're just needing a smaller bit. So it could be better for you instead of investing that $200, maybe you're just at the point you don't have that 200 to invest and have that leather sitting around forever. You can invest, you know, maybe that $40, which is a lot more per square foot, but it's a less, it's a smaller investment dollar wise at first, just to get the project piece you need. So uh, so that's why I say as you get going and you're doing more projects, um, you can lower that material cost by being able to buy more in bulk or set up, once you get a business going, you can have your business account with different vendors and things like that. Um, lost materials divided by two, I think. Oh, oh, Connie, I'm trying to read the rest of your comment and it's not showing up here to me. Um, it says with your dog leads, uh, which sell fairly well, you double the cost of materials divided by, oops, where did my chat go here? Double the cost of materials divided by two I think that would come back just to your straight cost of materials. Um, but if you have a system that works, then that's great. Like I say, it's gonna, it's gonna vary a bit um, with different, um, different, different industries and different clientele uh, that you're going, going to uh, with your different markets. Total eggs are popular. Oh man, great stuff, Terry. Yeah, uh, do some tote bags to get the money, uh, so then you can do the projects you want. That's awesome. Oh. 
Okay, a couple of really good questions here. Sorry, I was kind of reading and, and getting this gathered up here. Um, so, Brandon, how do you factor the cost of dye thread and such? It's, I, I kind of guesstimate a little bit. I, you know, really, your, your cost of, of thread and uh, dye, unless you're doing a lot of really full dye type of stuff, you could get, get into a higher cost, but like your thread and glue, I just kind of tack on a little bit to each project depending on what I'm doing. So I kind of round that out a bit. Um, and, and really, I, I don't have it broke down per item as much. Um, but it's going to tie in here a little bit with, with this next one. That's why it's kind of taking a second to read them both. But, um, Jason asks, how do you break down the cost of a hide? For example, if a half hide is $200, how would you break it down? The inches, feet, etc. which kind of goes in a little bit here with what Darcy's saying. Do you figure square foot of a whole hide and then price the product that way? Um, so when I look at a hide, I look at, you know, I'll, I'll buy a side of leather. How many, pro how many of those projects can I fit in there? I don't, because you have to account for, for scrap and waste, right? If, if I go just on the square footage and I say, okay, you know, this hide, say this hide costs $8 a square foot and this journal cover is going to be, you know, the leather I'm using is one foot by two foot. So it's two square feet. Okay. $16 is what my leather cost is. That doesn't work that way because I'm not buying just that piece of leather. You know, it's not like going to the fabric store and, and, and getting the yardage because you can, I mean, even the fabric, you're going to have some waste just with cutting your patterns, but you get a lot more use out of it. With the hide, there's going to be some different waste in there. So I look at it with like a, I, I, I figure a side of leather. How many belt blanks do I get out of a side of leather? I'm going to average 15 blanks in a side of leather um, because I'm taking the prime prime area for those blanks. I'm getting the highest quality of belt blanks as I can out of that hide. Now, if you're doing a variety of projects, you can say, well, I can get a few belts, I can get a couple planters, I can get six pairs of spur straps and, and whatever else. But uh, if you're looking at just a one product thing, well, how many of that product can you get out of one side? And then you can average that out. Well, if I get 15 belt blanks out of a hide and that hide is going to cost, um, I'm trying to think of some easy math here, but, um, you know, that, that hide, say that hide costs, uh, oh gosh, you're, say you're at $200 on that side of leather divided by your 15 belt blanks. What's that come out to be? Then from there, I'm going to add a little extra cost. Um, because of, again, the, um, uh, thread and glue and, and things like that, thread, glue, dye, those extra things you can add a little bit, throw a couple bucks on there, but then don't forget if you're lining that belt, now you just doubled the cost on that leather as well. So, um, really just breaks down to, to what you can get estimate a little bit it doesn't have to be exact when you're figuring those materials costs and i recommend estimating on the high side so budget high and again that's part of running the business if if you're doing it just because hey i'm able to do this so i want to do this for everybody i can and and not have to charge them anything just the bare minimum of the materials well, then you can get a little more precise on that, but that goes back to your why and your goal. Um, even, even where I say when you're just starting and figure out doing the um, uh, material cost times two, then estimate that a little bit high still because any of that extra money, 
you're going to be investing back into your business so you can buy more materials and be able to have more stuff on hand, which is going to cut down on your last minute shipping costs from different places. Uh, you're going to be able to start upgrading those tools, start getting into some different bigger machinery that you want to get. And if all that money is investing back in, that's going to help you really speed up that growth um, while continuing that learning curve as you go. Um, Shannon, when you're just starting out, um, would it save to pay to get wholesale pricing? Uh, that depends on kind of how much you're doing. What you have to just do the math on that. Um, what's that wholesale pricing? What if somebody's charging you for that wholesale pricing? Um, if you're talking about being charged for wholesale pricing that sounds like you're talking about maybe a tandy thing or, or an equivalent where you're paying to be a membership of some sort. Um, if you grow your business big enough and are actually running a business and, and, and can prove that you're running a business, then you can get wholesale pricing from, from different places um, without having to pay a fee for that. If you're paying a fee, that's more of a membership thing. A lot of times wholesale, you can run into minimums and things like that, though, too. Uh, how do you justify all the tools you buy? Um, I justify them because it's, it's going to help increase my quality of my product and my uh, efficiency of what I'm doing. Start to... Um, Connie, how much extra do you figure if a client wants hand painted backgrounds versus dyed backgrounds, which are a lot easier as you don't have to double the work? Um, I, I actually, I mean, they're my dyed backgrounds and my painted backgrounds are both done by hand. I, you know, same little paintbrush thing. Um, dyed backgrounds do go, tend to go a little bit quicker. Uh, because that dial run things like that however there's also the way I do it I if I'm dying my backgrounds majority of the time that means I'm actually bar grounding those backgrounds first so there's time in that and then if I uh, if I'm painting them I leave those smooth so that cuts that out a little bit you know drops your time down so I I wind up charging the same I you probably should charge a little bit more if um, for those painted backgrounds because sometimes you have to, especially on the lighter colors, you have to do a couple coats. Um, but there's not an exact on that. Um, so like I say, right now for me, I, I, they're charged the same. But I would probably, I, I would probably say another 25% more, whatever your upcharge is on that. Brandon, there's an awesome, awesome question. Um, Jeff, uh, on your way to your Barry King, I use a 20 ounce small on that. Um, but Brandon, do you set up a different price rate for custom tooling versus your standard stuff, or do you just follow a normal hourly rate for tooling? Um, okay, great question. I don't, I, for one, I don't run just a straight hourly rate in my shop. And that's just, I've, I've put in the, the years and the time and the trial and error and charged too little and charged too much and, and figured out what, where that kind of that sweet spot is on different things. And for me, what I've done is, and, and this, this is one that really, uh, really can get me going in into kind of a, a rabbit trail, but I, but I think is a, is a good one. And we'll go, we'll dive deeper on this in the future too. But the, 
like making it easy on your customer, right? And I talked about that a little bit last time, but for me, when you say my standard stuff, so like with my belts, I have my signature series belts. They're patterns that I've, that I've drawn, they're ones I've made, um, but anybody can order those, right? There's, you know, here's seven patterns, which one do you like? Pick that, I tap it off. So it cuts out, for me, it cuts out my drawing time on that particular, uh, that particular project. And versus if you want a full custom belt, which means I draw a pattern just for your belt and then it never gets reused, now you're getting that that base rate on that go, jumps up considerably from my signature series pattern because you're getting to pay for my drawing time um, and for the the my ability to draw a one-off pattern like that too you know my time that it's taken me to learn that that skill and that so that's why that's one thing i've changed that started charging more on that uh, and i and i really like doing that um it, it it makes it um, makes one a more affordable option for somebody that just just wants a nice handmade belt. They don't care if it's the same pattern as somebody else has. If they get to customize it with some initials and different color, they're happy. Um, so it really creates a good option for them. It creates a great option for somebody that does want a one of a kind. They can still get that but it makes it good for me because I get paid for my time in doing that one of a kind item as well. So, um, so it, it, that's a great question, um, Brandon. And I, and it's gonna, again, that's going to build into a whole nother, um, whole nother episode, I think on, on creating options for your customers, um, and developing almost a menu style, of options which I think is is really good and can really help your order process uh, and streamline things for your customer uh, Natasha not really pricing related but want to get more money for more intricate work um, that I think that's a that's actually directly price price related um and that that actually just feeds right there on to kind of what i was talking about with with brandon there uh okay let's see i see your you had the earlier part of your question when starting out tooling what main tools you advise i don't want to go all out is usual and have tools that never get used oh okay um the um, i i have a if you go to my website there's a link in the description there to 23 plus that's my main um my website and there's a blog post on there that has all my recommended tools so i'd check that out and touch it get you heading in the right direction um and and then that that will answer some of the tool questions but yeah getting more money for more intricate work is is a good thing it, and once you're able to do that more intricate work then you can definitely, definitely charge for that as well. Okay, just a couple more. We'll get things kind of wrapped up here. Um, okay, what would a Weston holster with just a bit of tooling on, what price would be fair? So Christopher, again, I'm gonna say that depends. It depends a lot on, um, on your, quality on you know your ability maybe you know a bit of tooling what's the, what does that mean uh, does that mean all floral tooling does that mean a pattern that you that you put on everything um are you having to draw that out so a lot of factors in that and that's where um you know that's where to ask what would that cost i i, I can't give you a, a dead set answer on that Oh, we're running out of battery. We're gonna have to get shut her down here pretty quick. Um, um, Buck and Swank Leather Shop, love it. Um, I, I I charge by the project, not by the hour. Okay, Darcy, when you do custom orders, do your customers dictate the design, or? 
do you get to create on your own? Um, if, how's the best way to answer that? If a customer wants to dictate a design, I can give them options <laughs> that they can choose from. But I, I also feel that I, I want to work with them and help them design a project too. Um, cause I can tell them some different things that, that look good, uh, on that particular project. If now somebody comes and they have some, they have some ideas. I really want this on there. I really want that. Um, I want to take that into consideration and work with somebody. Again, I want it to be, I want it to be a good experience for my customer and I want them to be extremely happy with what they get. However, I'm also putting my name on it. And so if somebody comes to me and they want me to do something and it's just a shoddy idea, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to, in a very nice way that works with them, help them shift their design to something that's maybe a little bit more appealing or something that works a little bit better and goes together. But there's also other things that somebody wants me to do. I'll just, no, I'm sorry. I, I, that's not me. I'm not your guy for that. You know, if you want that, it's probably going to want to find somebody else. Um, you know, and that's, I, I, I've had people ask me to put different, you know, tool different things into their projects that, um, hey, they're, they, I got this really cool idea. I want to put this on here and that on there. And I want it to say that. That's awesome. I, I'm not your guy. You know, there's, there, there may have been a time in life where I, I would have done all that and not uh, thought twice about it, but um, you have to decide what you want to do for your business and the image of your business as well. And, and, uh, be willing, being willing to say no, uh, is a great thing. But again, you don't want to, it's not, not to be a jerk about anything. You want to have, have a good experience for your customer. Um, but I, I want to help them design something that's, that's going to look good on that project, something that they're going to really love and also something that I'm proud to put my maker stamp on. Um, okay. One last question here and we're going to close it off. Um, again, I'm going to get to that last question, but, uh, if you find value in what we're doing here, please hit the like button. That just helps you know, I don't want to charge on any of this business builder stuff, um, but that helps YouTube show them that, hey, I'm, uh, I'm showing you guys good quality stuff. So if you find any value, hit that like button, and that'll really help me out here. Um, and my last, uh, last question, I said last one, but oh, Melissa, you got a good one going in there too. Um, Okay, where is a good place to order a personal stamp for your business? Steel Stamps, Inc. Uh, is who I recommend. Talk to Tim there. Um, he does a great job. That's who made my 23 plus stamp. Uh, he's made another stamp for me too. Great guy to work with and does an awesome job. Um, and then Melissa, you snuck in here with a great one that, boy, this is going to turn into a whole episode on its own too. But how do you feel about offering warranties? absolutely a thousand percent for me personally in my business uh, if you get something for me that you're not happy with you let me know like please let me know if, if something isn't right if it doesn't fit if it something falls apart I absolutely like please bring that back I will I will remake something I I I will not stand for my stuff to be falling apart like won't won't have it i i will rebuild you something and make it right um so yeah my stuff me personally i absolutely it's i i stand behind it so i i recommend that too and that's what i recommend putting that learning curve and getting getting to where you can stand behind it right i mean at first you don't know you make mistakes and that's how you learn um but that's uh yeah that's we're gonna we can probably do a whole Whole darn episode on that. I love it. Uh, I appreciate you guys all jumping on here. We do have, um, we do have, 
giveaway to go here. So 23 plus shirt, this uh, just a little 23 plus swag, uh, but it is from s and Design Co. It is my wife's business is who does actually produces my shirts for me. Uh, there's a link to her business in the description there. You can check her out. Um, like the, you know, like, follow, all that stuff on, on their social media. She's got a lot of other designs. It's not just custom screen printing, but she actually comes out with some of her own uh, product line as well. So you can check out that out. And we've given away a couple of these. I've given away a t-shirt every episode so far, and I think it's kind of fun to do. Um, I really appreciate you guys joining me and and just uh, asking some awesome questions. And I think we're getting into gonna gonna just continue on with some really um really great stuff uh with where this this thing's going again this is all coming based on the questions that you guys give me so uh, i hope you guys find value out of this stuff and i got a lot of really good questions tonight um but one, uh, oh, sorry, I got sidetracked here reading here. Um, a lot of really good questions tonight. Uh, Brandon Stratton there, I appreciate. Um, you, had a, you had a couple great questions that really got me kind of going on some different directions. Um, but so why don't you shoot me, shoot me your information. I need a t-shirt size. Uh, and a mailing address, you can email that to me at mailingjoe um, at Yahoo, or you can message me on kind of any of the platforms, Instagram, uh, Facebook at 23 plus, 23 PLUS, uh, and we'll get you hooked up there with that. Um, Connie, could you do an episode on custom fitting a belt? Um, Connie, soon coming up we're going to do a whole thing in the leather life classroom and i think you're in there connie if somebody if if you guys aren't in the leather life classroom but want to be it's a subscription-based classroom i work through an entire project um, each month you get all your patterns and things and a belt is going to be i think that's going to be a really good course in there on on just we can do all sorts of stuff with that fitting construction um, tooling all that um so that's going to probably be where that winds up connie is in the in the classroom there as opposed to one of the business builder episodes so appreciate you guys being on here again if you find value uh, be sure to hit the like button subscribe so you don't miss out on further videos and check out the links in the description let me know what other questions you have and what direction we want to go with this business builder series because i want to my goal is to bring value and help you build your business and shorten that learning curve um, from the different different things that I've learned along the way. So appreciate you guys and we'll see you in the next episode.